So I'm going to quickly show you what I use before I head down to the river to catch my sockeye or red salmon. Um, I use yarn. Um, I use a snelled hook. I use a swivel and I use an egg sinker. That's one of the ways that you can do it. Um, tools that you do need to make sure that you have is you need to have a pliers, a needle nose pliers. You need to have a scissors. They work good for cutting your line, um, working with whatever I cut my yarn with it. Um, you can also use these, they call them Russian red flies. Um, they're, you can get them two, three for a dollar if you buy them in town here. If you buy them other places, um, different states or other places, they're typically 99 cents, a dollar a piece. So I would wait to buy those until you come here. And then some split shot. Um, I don't use this technique, but I'll show you that technique as well. And I'll show you how I do that. I poke that tag in through. So I have that tag hanging over, I have the body of my line here, I spin it around four, five, you know, five, six, seven, eight times. So once I've got that spun, you can see how it's kinked up through the line there and it's spun. Um, I'm going to take that tag and, and I'm going to poke it right through where my finger was. And then I can pinch that, and as you can see, I've made another hole. I just take that tag end of that line, I pinch it through that hole, and pull it through that second hole. And then I squeeze both that and the body of my line and it pulls it tight I can let go of that tag end and then you can just slide this down to your hook and then just inch it down and then pull that snug and you have tied what is called the standard fisherman's knot and then you can cut that off and there's where your scissors can come in handy so we can take that tag end of that line and we've cut that off. So then what I'm going to do is I typically run a four to six foot leader when I'm fishing reds here at the Kenai. So I'm going to take off four to six feet of line. Typically I just take my arms and open up my arms and as I pull my arms across and open them all the way up, that's about the distance I use. So the next thing that I do is I've cut my line and which is just the length of my arm, so no sta no special measuring needed. Um, so I've cut my line. I take the body of my line that's connected to my reel. I'm going to poke it through my egg sinker. And then I'm going to take that main body and I'm just going to poke it through the other end of that swivel. And again, I'm going to do that fisherman that's not. Poke it through. One, two, three, four, five. That's good enough. Poke it through where my finger just was. And now that I've cut that, I'm going to show you what I do here real quick. I'm going to take that t body of that line. I'm going to poke it through. So now I have a tag end hanging up here. I'm going to spin it one, two, three, four, five times. And that should be good enough. After I've spun it five times, I'm going to take that tag end. And I'm going to poke it through that loop that I just made where my finger was. And as I poke it through there, I create another loop. And I just push it back through. And then I can pull that tight. Try not to cinch it too tight because it can put line burns in your line. Um, until you get it down, snug on that loop, then then pull it snug. So if you're if, if that knot's way up high and you start pulling, it's gonna drag and put some line heat across there and it can weaken your line through there. So there's what we have, and I've got that all set up. Next thing I do is I go to the other end of my leader and I take my snelled hook and you can see that this hook is actually curved up and away from the shank of the hook. I prefer that. I'm going to start at the top. I'm not going to do that standard fisherman's knot anymore. I'm going to start at the top. And I'm going to push that through. And then it's kind of like a little fly. I, I got that line. I opened it up. And then I just kind of push it back together so I can pinch pinch it. I, I think it kind of looks like a little fly here, as you can see. So, if I need to pull some extra line here, I'm pulling from the body, not the tag. I need that tag to hang out about a half inch to an inch past. So I make my little loop, and I'm going to take that loop that's pinched, and again, I pull that tag end back, and then I'm going to just spin it around and pinch. So now I have this big loop, and I'm going to take that loop and spin it four to six times around that tag end, and I don't want that tag end to come flipping around through the hook, so 
I can flip, I mean, you can spin it more than six times, just whatever you're comfortable with. So now that I've got that, next thing I do is I actually take my teeth, and I bite that, and I pull just gently, you don't have to pull very hard. And I've pulled that loop tight, and you can see there's a snell knot there. And we call this an egg loop knot. And you can see there's a, a loop here on my hook. So I'm going to pull this tight. And then I'm going to slide this knot up to my hook. So now I've slid that knot up, and I can push my line back up and through. Um, what I do is I have a yarn kit here, and it's just a like, little plastic container that you put standard tackle in, and I put my yarn in it, um, and then you can have a variety of colors in here as well. So when I have that closed, then what what it allows me to do is I can grab a color and I can cut off a piece and then as it keeps getting lower I can just keep pulling yarn out and it's not all over loose so I just have little ends that are exposed so this little yarn box works really nice I'd like to give a shout out to Warren Carlson from Duluth, Minnesota who uh, hooked me up on this technique in about 19 92 and I think this box is is from that same time as well so thank you Warren um, so now what I'm gonna do is when I'm out there fishing I'll quickly tie that knot and I can do it in about 20 seconds I can have this all tied up and have my whole thing done in less than a minute standing right on the river 45 seconds so I have that loop so this kit is in in my vest so I'm just gonna pull out a little bit of yarn while it's in my vest and so I've just cut a little piece there so then all I do is while I'm down there is I put that piece of yarn into that loop and then I pull that tight And, for the reds it doesn't matter too much, but you can either snip this, keep it, um, a lot of times I just leave that tag in and this, um, but you can pinch it around your fingers, um, if I'm fishing, um, steelhead and stuff like that, or I want it to look more like an egg, um, that's what I do, and then this drifts down the river. And this is a quick, easy pattern to use, um, you don't have to sit at home and tie a bunch of egg patterns, which I think are a waste of time because this works just as good or better. Um, and you can use smaller hooks if you want to get a size 10 and have a tiny hook on. When you're fishing the reds, you want a bigger hook, something that's a little bit stronger and can handle the weight and pressure of these of these fish as well. So that's what I use, and then I run that out through the river. Um, the other technique that we have is you can simply, and this is the easier technique which I suggest beginners to use, is just go to the store, um, you just buy these red flies, you know, two or three for a buck, and you just come out here, loop that through, you can just do a standard whatever knot you want, I always do this fisherman, and make sure you get, I don't know if you can see, that is not tight, so I'm going to pinch that over with my pliers. Um, but I do just have another fly right here, and I never use these flies. But a lot of times when you're fishing in the river, you'll catch fish that already have hooks in them, and that's where I got these, or you'll find them on the riverbank. Um, so you're going to poke that through, and then you can just do that standard knot, whatever you're comfortable with. Um, this is the one I call it a fisherman's knot. I don't know if it's called it. I don't think it's a trilene knot. So then you just pull that cinch it tight, take your scissors, and you'll cut that, and then you can just run that through the river. <coughs> if you do not want to use the swivel, and for beginners I would suggest not using this, you're just going to tie that, a or that, that fly, that red fly, onto the end of your line. You're going to open your hands up, 
from one end to the other, pinch your line, and then you're just going to, instead of using that egg sinker, you'll just take a few split shots, and depending on the current, speed of the current, the flow, you're just going to clamp two, three, four um, sinkers on there. Some people will tell you, oh, it's always this much weight. Um, it really depends on the flow of the river. Some rivers, some years the river's flowing faster, has more water, and some years it doesn't. And so you need more or less sinkers depending. Um, so a lot of people like to use split shots. Sometimes they pop off, so you'll just have to make sure you tighten them down every once in a while. Um, if you lose one, just pop another one back on, and then just make sure you keep that distance of, you know, three to six feet um, for a liter. Some people swear by long liters, some swear by small. That's my techniques and that's what I do, so hopefully this helps you out and I'll see you at the river.